security, then the solicitation part is right. I mean, uh, as a security, don't don't go hustling. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, one question: When you say active in the business, what yeah. like on an index of criteria, and is yeah. it <clears throat> do I have to work in it half time? Yeah, uh, no, that's the way it was. Bright lines. You have bright lines. There aren't bright lines. But the way to think of this is a member-managed LLC, a member-managed limited liability company. And you do want to have an entity as opposed to just you and me together without an entity, because that's a general partnership we'll both bet the house on that one. So you want to set up a, 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 an entity like a partnership or a corporation, a limited liability company or a limited partnership or a corporation. LLCs are the easiest things to form. You can do it online, Secretary of State's office. So you put the entity between you and the investors, and you're both here. <coughs> Two kinds of LLCs. Member managed, when both you and I are making all the decisions, we both have to agree before we do anything. Or manager managed. Let's say you're the manager, and we're both members. <coughs> it's like you're the officer, but I'm not an officer. I'm just passive. Right. That's more likely to be a security. You, so a member, so the member managed form of LLC is a safer thing to avoid having a security involved. Okay, even if we say, but you're going to run the day to day, and we'll just get together month to month to talk about this and make the big decisions. As long as I am involved in the decisions, it, it it's probably not a security. On the other hand, if you make all the decisions and we never meet and you never tell me. And I trust you, and it's set up like that, and it looks like that, and it is a security. So it's a fact and circumstances kind of deal. So at the beginning, you want to write some rules about, you can't help it if I don't participate. So it's my own damn fault if you had called monthly meetings and nobody shows up but you, okay? But if you don't call the meetings, so, so there's this, there's a lot of little points of definition in here, and you don't want to play around this game. There are a lot of securities lawyers in town, and a lot of lawyers can tell you about this kind of stuff. I'm not as X9 isn't so special on this kind of stuff. Okay. But it'd be a way to get around the security law if you just a lot of people skip try. Lunch and they they try a lot. That, that's exactly the way they go. Right. And yeah, I'm not afraid of the securities laws. I mean, that's what I do. Uh, but many people would just rather not be let that fraud problem happen or something like that. But if you go partners, and everybody's a partner, and everybody's a member. Um, and you can do an LLC with as many members as you want? Sure. Okay. This is corporate law. I mean, that's partnership law, not securities law. <laughs> you do securities law, I'm saying don't do a general advertising thing, you know. If you if you need to find, if you think to fund this, you need 50 or 100 partners, yeah. gonna, it's not going to work very well. You're going to be doing a general solicitation, probably, and you're probably going to get in trouble because it's hard to get 50 guys to make a decision. So you're going to be falling back into, I'll run it, and you just trust me. <coughs> That's what makes you. If you're a fiduciary to the other people, right, uh, and they're not fiduciaries to you, uh, then it's likely to be a security. And you can set that up in paperwork. Yeah. If you set them up with a total of 49% membership, then you don't have to worry about it because you always have the last say. Well, you're talking about control. There are a lot of different ways to have control. Uh, many people who put money into things, if, if you don't know them really well, they don't want anybody to have, they have to be a decision-making process. So 51-49 is one way to decide, but 50-50, it's a one, I mean, you got to do the negotiations. I mean, everybody's different. I've been partners with, I mean, I'm a lawyer. I've been partners with a lot of different people. They're all kinds of deals. It's mostly trust. Anyway, so uh, that covered the first line. Second line, an angel investor. Okay, <coughs> if you find someone who is a millionaire or Makes two hundred thousand a year for each of the last two years, and with their uh, and expects to make it this year, or with their spouse makes three hundred thousand. Those are sort of what we call accredited investors. All the stuff I'm saying is in the memo, by the way, pretty much. Okay. So, if you found, and there are a lot of accredited investors, you can't count their house unless their house is underwater. Then you have to count the debt. Okay. 
didn't used to be like that. I used to say drive by their house. If it's a big house, they're probably accredited. But now you can't do that. You can ignore the house. Okay. So unless so, so they're questionnaires and things. But accredited investors are good because if you're going to sell them a security, okay, then uh, there's an exemption we use. Call, uh, a safe harbor we use from federal registration called Rule 506. This is in the memo. Rule 506, the SEC's rule, preempts the states. So if you use something that preempts the states and you're exempt at the federal level, the state can't stop you from doing your little, uh, your little sale of securities. Okay? So everybody tries to find 506. And if you have accredited investors in a 506, then you preempted the states, and there's no disclosure that you must. It's a checklist that you have. To, you don't have to do that for 506. Okay. How do you get 506? Uh, but, well, you can read in the memo. Okay. memo thing. But but um, it tells you what the criteria are. But but it's 506B. Anything that was written after. Uh, b before September 23rd of 2013, talks about 506, throw that away, okay? Because they came, there are, two, there are now two exemptions under 506. 506B, which I'm talking about, and 506C, which you don't want to go near right now. It's general advertising, general solicitation, the whole thing about, there's a whole bunch of extra rules there under the Jobs Act, it's in the memo. But let's just stick with 506B right now, not do general advertising, find accredited investors, like <coughs> five people live in your block or something like that, and let's go with it, okay? And so you have your exemption, and you still have to worry about telling the truth, otherwise you can, it's still security, so you can for fraud. So be, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do disclosure. I mean, you can give them a business plan, or you can give them a two box worth of paper, let them figure it out. But as long as they know the info, then they sign a piece of paper saying, yeah, I knew what I was doing. I, I got to see everything you got. You didn't have much, but I saw it all. I got to ask all the questions. And there are forms for this you can find. Uh, uh, what's it called? Legal Zoom isn't too bad. It's not state by state. So you do need a little bit of help to get it right. But there are a lot of forms out there on how to get the subscription agreement done and stuff. So, um, Yes. I'm going to ask you, I think of securities as if you wanted to have a lot of investors. The number has nothing to do with it. The SEC tried back in a case called Ralston Purina. You don't write this down. Back, it is the only Supreme Court case interpreting um, this private placement stuff that the 506 comes underneath. And the SEC said, well, you know, let's make it 35, <coughs> let's make it 25. So more than that, it's public. I remember with text, it was 35. I don't know what that means, just a second. Okay. But, but, but I might know, just, but the, um, no, you can have a security if it's just the two of us. I got one and you, were, you sold it to me. You created it and you sold it to me. Mm. Yep, because the, uh, the, the Supreme Court wasn't defining security in that one, but what they were basically saying is number has nothing to do with it, okay? But security, I mean, I, uh, if, okay, you're going to start a grocery store and you've got your grandmother to invest in it, she's not going to work there. I, if she's put bought a piece of the company, or if you, she loaned you the money, expects them back with interest, it's highly likely that's a security. Mm -hmm. Now, if you gave her a mortgage on it, then it looks a lot more like a debt. Or if you gave her a lien or on an asset or the inventory or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what, I mean, one way to avoid security, but you won't want to do, is give them a piece of ownership of your invention. I mean, and lo against the loan, okay? You like to take I will give you, oh, a, yeah. I will assign you 25% of my patent if I don't example. pay you back, okay? <laughs> that looks a whole lot more like a loan there mm -hmm. than it does like a security.
but that probably still could be a security infrastructure like that. It's really hard to avoid the securities laws. People don't understand this, including a lot of lawyers. I, go, you know, what lawyers do, we open woods and rub in salt. So, <laughs> so I give talks to lawyers, and they sit there and think, like, "Holy moly, what have I been doing?" Right. And if you but give them a percent of your invention, that could equal a lot more than what they actually gave you. You're absolutely right. So that would be. Well, on the other hand, you don't have any money. So there's this risk reward kind of benefit. Yeah. Good luck. Mm -hmm. But I'm from Iowa, you know. Anything but more. You don't want to mortgage the farm if you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's. So what were you? You were asking about 35. Oh, it was, yeah, tenants in common is an investment pool. Okay, ticks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't want to think about the 35, but uh, if you have a fractional undivided interest. A tenant in common. The SEC thinks those are securities. The real estate people didn't think they were securities. But, you know, like everything gets abused. So uh, it probably started off where they weren't securities, and then there were enough people ripping people <laughs> off that the courts changed their view. So, Tex, uh, uh, I just tell people don't go that direction. Unless, I mean, unless we're talking about a lot of real estate being involved, okay? Otherwise, don't, don't go there. Okay. I mean, I, the odds are it probably, I mean, I mean, I love doing them, but, but I'd stay away from that. So what you're basically doing is writing a contract between the investor and the inventor? Yep. That's in essence what you're doing when you're looking for an investor. Mm -hmm. If you have an entity, it's called a subscription agreement, okay? In essence, you, say, you make an offer. I'll give you 25% of my company for $50,000. And then they and sign in the well, contract, the subscription agreement, which is a subscription to get to 25, and they write their check and they give it back to you. This is equity, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you decide whether you want to let them in to do it or not because you have to figure out whether they know what they're doing. Or you can't take money from people who are insane, that would be wrong. Okay. <laughs> or you can't take a widow with five kids, you, know, you can't take her last 50000 that would be wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are things like that. So mm -hmm. you get them to tell you who they are, sort of profile for you, their questionnaires you can get for that. Mm -hmm. And then you say, well, it's really hard when you got the check in your hand and you're looking at it, and it's the money you need. But if you don't want to go partners <coughs> with that person, don't go partners with that because you have to remember that they all have 2020 hindsight. Investors, they always think you should have told them something if it doesn't win. It doesn't matter what it was. <laughs> Even if you're successful, I mean, I've had people who did IPOs and I've had guys come in and say, I wanted 50,000 shares and you only sold me 10 three years ago. Well, wait a minute. My guys were begging for the 50,000 <coughs> three years ago. But these, you know, they want more now, so you got to keep record. I mean, it's just, you'd be surprised. Yeah, anyway. So moving on down through this. Um, crowdsourcing, number three. Uh, it says crowdfunding, and I know that's what people, but, but, but from a lawyer's point of view, it's better to talk about crowdsourcing because for me, crowdsourcing does not involve stock or securities. And so Kickstarter and Indiegogo and those, those sites, you're not, they are not uh, sites for stock sales or equity sales. And they should not, these sites, the sites you deal with should not be the sites that have more, have loans on them. There are certain sites out there that are called peer-to-peer. -peer. That's a different kind of thing. The traditional, and I just talked to a guy two hours ago about a Kickstarter deal he's going to do. Um, he needs to raise, uh, he, he needs to raise $50,000, okay? And uh, he's going to, he's got this call scheme guy. He's a good guy. I represented him on his first startup. Didn't go anywhere, but that's okay. He's about 25 years old. And uh, he is going to, uh, at the end of next week, he's going to put something on on Kickstarter, raise 50000 and if you understand, everybody know what Kickstarter is? Yeah. Okay. 
So it, they really don't get anything for it, but it's a very cool idea. So if you can get <coughs> 60000 60, out of this, um, then you'll have enough. Um, I hope he wants to pay me. I don't think he's talked about He's planning on that, but that's okay. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea. You can pay me a product. But, but it's Why don't you say it? We'll look it up on Kickstarter. What? Why don't you say the idea? And we'll look well, he it. hasn't done it yet. Yeah. I mean, it's his idea, and, and well, you know, that's the whole beginning premise. We don't talk about this stuff, okay? He didn't tell me. To, I mean, it's under privilege. Right? Okay. But once it's on a Kickstarter. Well, you'll you'll see it 5280, and you'll see it in the Denver Post, because he's going to promote that damn crowdfunding site. And I said, as long as it's not a security, you can go do that. I don't know a single reason why you can't go on Kickstarter. Uh, and he says they get 40% of what they look for now. In, in 2012, they were only saying fi seven, 15 to 17% get what they're looking for. So because of the publicity about all this that has happened. Now, the, the crowdfunding, number four here, um, that is stock. Uh, there's a crowdfunding provision in the JOBS Act. The SEC <coughs> hates crowdfunding, okay? Do not do crowdfunding. Don't go out on the internet and say we're selling stock in our company. Okay, that's wrong. It'll get you, just get you in trouble. Don't do that. Um, it's going to be here probably next fall. That's what the SEC is saying. They'll approve the, the rules. At the so end. that'll be national equity crowdfunding. That's what they're saying. Okay. But but I'll believe it when I see it because <coughs> I, I was just at an SBIC. Um, uh, meeting today. They, they had a guy who runs the SBIC program and SBIRs. Do you guys know what SBIRs are? They're grants for inventions you get out of Small Business Administration. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You had a guy present on it, Russ Farmer. <laughs> I'm going to get him back. Yeah, Russ Farmer. Now, I'll go way off the record here. Okay. Russ Farmer's company gets a ton, a a ADA, they get a ton of grants themselves. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. But that, that's the company, uh, Cliff Brown's company. But but they just, all their inventions are up on the wall. They've got so many cool things, but they never commercialize it. The program is really set up for for guys like you guys, I mean, to get the grant and go out there and commercialize what works. So I'm a little, I mean, Russ knows, the they know the program really, really well. well he's kind of like, a, he's a private intermediary. He used to be. Like, he knows yeah. He knows all the SBIR rules and how yeah, to he package does. your yes, company he to get a better chance of approval because, believe me, from what I've heard, these things are ultra competitive. Yes, but he but they but the AD, he has two hats. The ADA hat is a place that gets lots of grants for their own money, and that so you need to deal with him on the okay. your own company side as a consultant or whatever. He is. No, he does his stuff. There's no doubt about that. Okay, it's just. But anyway, they were promoting today, so I was with those guys. And it turns out that the SBA is part of a team looking at the proposed crowdfunding rules that the SEC put out. The SEC is the regulators. They want to slow it down and make it hard to do crowdfunding. And the states want to slow it down and make it hard to do crowdfunding. People like SBA want to make it easy because for small business, because they're, they're written for small business. So there's this tug of war in the federal I mean, I root for the SBA on this one because that's, you know, that's what it's about. Anyway, so just to, that's a little bit of insight. Crowdfunding, equity, yeah, you got that. Four and five, you got that. Debt loans. Um, I, would, I talked about that a bit. The peer-to-peer -peer stuff which is coming along, and there's several new things coming on, um, which you may or may not qualify for, but it's basically credit card syndication. I don't. I just. I'm not here to talk about it. But there's a guy called Bo Bruskern. Um, I think it's called Source Lending. You might check that out. For maybe have them come over and talk. Source Lending. Uh, source Lending. The, the local guy. Who's, I mean, there are five or six of these around the country now. Bo Bruskern. Is, 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 I heard. And I was in Boulder two days ago. The guy mentioned it, so I mentioned to another client uh, who's job hunting. Uh, <laughs> And he called up Bo Buskler. And apparently, they're going to, but I don't know much about that. But it is going online, syndicating loans, basically, that are, and then 
somebody else rolls them all up in pools and sells them <coughs> to banks and stuff. I mean, I don't get it. But that's, that's the way mortgages work, isn't that's it? That's right. Yeah. It's the same kind of guys who got us in trouble before. Anyway, but what do you care? It's you, you're the one. If they get a good deal for you, let them go. Okay. Okay. So um, do they mix like high risk and low risk loans? I don't or? know. Huh. All I know is uh, from the investor side, all I know is there's people in the middle taking a fee. Okay, that's all yeah, I know. Yeah, that's about. The always. <laughs> but from your point of view, when you view it, uh, you know, just tell me what the rules are and, and how can I borrow the money, that kind of thing. But but my only caveat there is right, except when my home mortgage got into that and now you go three steps removed and somebody has the mortgage to my house and they don't even know it. These are the same people who brought us that way of looking at the world. So, you know, they're foreclosing on you and you don't even know who it is. So, it's just a care, I'd be careful in the second level of this stuff. I mean, the first level, sure, 18 percent, you know, three years or whatever. So that's that's this, this debt loans kind of thing from a securities lawyer's point of view. Uh, Does it, um, this yeah. have to be for a product or can you use it for an idea? Like, you know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's for companies, okay. They're going to want your credit, your personal credit. Okay. Uh, products themselves. That's he didn't ask me to come to talk about that, but we can talk about products. Um, in a different conversation. I mean, is that on the show? This is like my idea. I have yeah, an idea that can make money idea. if it's with you know in the right hands. But you know it right. is going to cost me money to write a contract. You know with the artist. You're a radio or TV program or something? It's a TV show that could also be a road tour for a okay. singer. Uh, well, the performance artist, perfor if you can find a performance artist, you might get into it. Of course, you need to be sure they don't swipe it from you. But well, see, that I just, I just presented to the Righteous Brothers with uh, his manager, and after he got my contract, he said he was going to pass on it. <laughs> Good, you got to present. Well, that's okay. Yeah, oh, I you got a that good. Yeah, that's great. I got, yeah, it took me a while to get to yeah. the real manager of Bill Medley. You know, his <coughs> partner has passed away. Right. Okay. Had, but um, now I'm, and I just sent an email today to the Ramsey Lewis's manager. Because okay. I think he can pull it off. <laughs> well, just uh, well, something to think about in those things. Uh, just an aside, you know, you want to have something, the word confidential or non-disclosure around this stuff, or you're only looking at that to tell me whether you're interested in it from my point of view. So they, so if they steal it, you've got something to say they breached. There are forms like that, writers got forms, you can get them online, because not even they won't sign it, but at least if you put in the email that it was confidential, it was just for them to look at, because you wanted to know if they were interested in your investing in your thing or partnering with you and for no other reason. Mm -hmm. Then you at least you're giving your lawyer something to protect to, to argue about later on if they right. give you a bad deal. Yeah, Roger wrote the agreement. Well I'm not worried though. Okay. <laughs> Should I be worried, Roger? <laughs> Nobody likes mine, they're too uh, long, but I'm okay. extremely well, proud of them. I was gonna Okay, you know, I'm going to go to some other stuff, but go ahead. Donna was asking the question, well, when you look at debt, you know, the, the advantage is you keep control. You know, it's a loan. Mm -hmm. The drawback is fixed expense, which you don't have with equity. So that's a burden on you financially. But then debt breaks into secured and unsecured. So you run up unsecured, that's credit cards. High interest rates, but you don't have to put up collateral. Mm -hmm. And then secured, when you start out, the collateral is like your personal, right? Like your other assets or house. But <clears throat> there's a turning point there. How big does a company need to get before you can actually borrow against the company's own credit and not personally guaranteed? Well, you know, SBA loans, they require personal guarantees. So, and yeah, it's a long way to go. Be risky business. Because, you know, at the venture capital club, I mean, the entrepreneurs, you know, the lawyer gets up and talks about, you know, LLCs protect you from liability. And they go, that's all bunk because when I got any kind of financing, I had to personally guarantee right. plus equipment leasing and all this stuff. 
and and that, so that well, that's because the, the that's because they're afraid of the entities because the entities exist. The entity doesn't keep, have its own yeah, critical but, mass. But, but, well, the, you know, there's two ways to think about that. One is we're telling you to set up the entities to protect your from them coming after your house, okay? right. and on the other side, the people providing the money do want to come after your house because there's not it's enough in the secure. middle thing. Okay, yeah. so there are two different or opposing arguments here. So the question is, when does my when is it okay for my house not to be on the line? That's basically the question. <coughs> no personal guarantees or this thing they call piercing the corporate veil or alter ego mm -hmm. is when they try to go through the entity because there's no personal guarantees. Uh, so they try to go through the entity, get to you by saying, oh, this company was just what you wanted it to be. It did whatever you wanted it to be. You never ran a land company. You ignored the existence of the company. It doesn't exist. It's an alter ego of you, therefore no entity to protect you. So your goal is once you set the entity up, I don't like a corporation or an LLC, do, it, do whatever rules you set for yourself follow the rules. Now the question is, when do I not have to personally guarantee this stuff? Well, when there are enough assets in there or enough cash flow in there, from some third person's point of view, mm -hmm. that the lender will believe them because they'll never believe you, okay? that it's worth enough for them to loan the money. So let's say there's a, it's worth a million dollars they might loan you a hundred thousand on that without right. the personal guarantee. That's right. that kind of thinking. Cash flow lender, that's a bank. There are cash flow lenders out there who, if you have sales, they'll loan against the sales and they take the, the worst kind, they're not bad, I mean, they're not evil, they're just tough, the toughest terms are called factors, okay? Right, on You sell receivable. something yeah. and they take over, over the payable, the, the receivable, oh. so the, the 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 customer has to pay them. They get paid, and then the, you get what's left over. That's called a factor, and it goes. Then you go all the way up to um, uh, the asset-based lenders at Wells Fargo, for example, will loan against your accounts receivable and your assets in place. I mean, there's all different kinds of lenders out there. So, but at this stage, with what you folks say you are. You're going to be putting your house on the line on debt. I can't. So I guess it's a know, credit card. I, it's, I, it's a growth thing. I mean, eventually, yeah. if everything's go right, the company's assets are going to grow much bigger than your house. But well, in your case, your risk is a lot That's your collateral. Well, you, you put your house up when it's the most riskiest time. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm using the house as an example. The it's, because you, it's, it's likely to be the only asset you've got. You know, I mean, I had a guy who <coughs> pledged his car, you know, like a Porsche, a nice oh. car. <laughs> That's all he had, <laughs> and, the, and the, this was U.S. It was a Vectra Bank branch, okay, and, and uh, you know it was a car was probably worth eighty-five thousand. They loaned him forty thousand on it. And he, he did he it. borrowed that much against a car? It was a nice car. Wow. It was a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, you don't think he's still driving around. We don't have the shirt. They're the insured and all. That. I mean, you're trying to. F we're going to go to some other pages here about how do I finance these? I mean, what do I use? And, We'll get to there. Let's just keep going. I'll Look in the garage. I'll get you there. Okay. So let's just skip over the rest and go on. But here's Grants. He's got Grants on page three, and he's absolutely right. I mean, they may right nowadays like the they they're not as, as quote unquote dumb as they used to be. Those Grants. So they want warrants or options sometimes now, uh, in addition to the to just the free money. So it's I mean it's, it's they what. The thing that's, that's active in a lot of this now is like those SBIC deals. If they can get the money back, they can relend it. Oh, right. Okay. So right. they can take a, a billion, excuse me, from Congress. If they can loan it over four times or five times, it's a four or five billion dollar deal. Okay. So they don't just lend it. I mean, they want to get them paid back so they can loan them out again and pay them out so they them again. So that's. Um, that's why they put some conditions on it now. But the SBA still is a pretty good deal if you can qualify. Um, let me see these don'ts, because these are sort of opinions, uh, not pure law. It's, you know, watch out for the risk here. Right, this is, he's just saying, you, you're just saying here, don't be a secure, don't sell security. You said it like three different ways. I think they'll, they'll get it here. Uh, that's, that's on page three, and then issue stock. 
you know, solicitation. Yeah, I think thing. sure you can do that. I mean, the solicitation so, probably should be emphasized because that's right something the average person doesn't. All that like. means, all that you know, all the securities lawyers. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Go but, ahead. But, 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 we did never have to think about about general solicitation. We just said, don't do it unless it's a public offering. Okay. And now, because of the Jobs Act, we all have to think through again what is and isn't a general solicitation. So we're all becoming solicitation experts. Okay. <laughs> so if I put it on Facebook, that's a I'm general solicitation. Well, it's a general solicitation. That but if I go to each of those friends and ask them, one by one, like yes, it's, you're right. No. In that, that's, I'm sorry. Right. So if I <coughs> now you got to say how many and how often did that? Yeah, I know. You, I'm just guessing ahead. If you leafleted every car in the church parking lot on Sunday, that's probably a general solicitation. If you leaflet one car, <laughs> the church. Has a, hey, Joe, I've got an idea. That's probably not a general solicitation, okay? Uh, so it has to be individuals solicitation. Uh, you're, it, it, it has to be one person at a time. Well, that, that's well, that's not quite. Two or three. I mean, here's the deal: like these angel groups, like the Rockies <laughs> Venture Club. The Rockies Venture Club's a client, so I have to be careful. They've been reinvented here, Peter Adams. So that everything they used to do on these, you know, you over there and make a pitch, okay, right. basically. Um, before the Jobs Act, nobody cared that he would advertise in advance. You know, we're gonna have these three companies come and talk, come and listen, okay? Now, all these eight clubs all across America are worried because of general solicitation rules have come in for this 506C that I talked about. You know. So, all of a sudden, they're worried that that kind of a, an email sent out to all their members about the three companies that pitch is a general solicitation. They weren't worried about it before, but now the spotlight is on this stuff to decide whether it's a 506B, where you can't do it, or a 506C, where you can, but there's a whole bunch of new rules about this. So now here we are all going to become experts again on solicitations. You know, one on one is fine, okay? One on two might be okay. <laughs> I don't know whether it's one on 10 or one on 20 or one on 30. I mean, I don't know, but I know that if we put an ad in the Where's newspaper somebody? that says, everybody and their brother come down to the Brown Palace, we're gonna tell you about the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's a general solicitation and you yeah, should not do that. When you're going after people, you have no prior contact. Right. With. But I thought there was but a you have prior existing business relationship. If you had a, a relationship. That's a different kind of thing. So members of the RBC there had a business relationship. Right, but it's a false statement what you said. Oh. The, 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 you, if you have a prior, ex 506, you're going to shoot me on this stuff, but I'm a conservative lawyer. I, and I've been around too long because I remember. But 506, remember, it preempts the states. The power for Rule 506, this is all in the, in the article, comes out of the statute. 4A2. If you screw up 506B, the old fashioned version, no general solicitation, you can go back to the statute where the Supreme Court looked at this thing. I never answered, completed my sentence on that. It's not about number under the statute and under 506B. It's about access to the information. So if you just go talk to one person and you want their money, you're going to tell them everything they need. No, okay. If you go to a millionaire, a billionaire, you're going to tell them everything he asked for to get his money. Okay. Uh, but if you do a general solicitation to a thousand people, you only need a few people to give you the money and you may not tell them everything they need to know. It's like it's, it's a concept of crowd uh, sourcing. Many, many, many people, there are some in there who won't ask the right questions. They'll get you enough money to get going. That's what they don't want. They don't want the general solicitation uh, uh, because the, the Supreme Court said you can't, basically can't do that. That should be registered. That should be a public offering in that case under 42. So to take you back to right now, 506C, the general advertising thing that we were just talking about, the SEC says that is not under the statute. 
which says no general solicitation because the court said that so so because they were the jobs act congress made them come up with this 506 c thing they didn't want to and they made them do it so they're saying no we're just it because congress made it so even though we preempt the states we got this rule if you screw up this 506 c general solicitation with everything you can't go hide behind the regular statute thing because you've done general solicitation so you you're screwed and that's excuse me but that's what that's why they come to guys like me to help you figure out how to get through this stuff like me. The prior existing business relationship <coughs> comes from some SEC, no action letters, many of them, that were under the statute, the 4A2 stuff. So we always tell everybody that does a 506B this uh, that you should have a prior existing business relationship. Now that is not written into that 506B, but because we know the SEC still believes in it, it comes out of the statute, okay? We say get a prior existing business relationship with these people. So if everything else screws up under this B thing we've been talking about, you're okay under the statute. You can always go back to the statute to be protected if you don't. This is maybe way more complicated than you wanted it to be, but I'm sorry. How do you do a general solicitation without a non-disclosure? You don't. I you mean, can try yeah. to sign it. General solicitation is just advertising. You know, well, you're inviting investors. Right. Oh, just invest say, in my call me, call me, call me. You're just going to say invest in my idea, but not tell them what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> you I don't want to do that. You're right. So yeah. the way you way you would do advertising. You do a presentation of that. Right. The point is now you're talking about something else. This is the lawyer and me. <laughs> An offer. You a general solicitation is about getting people to call you up. Mm -hmm. But in the general solicitation itself, what you put in there isn't, you don't put an offer in there. You just say, we're doing the newest move, the best movie script that ever hit town and the best music. It's like a teaser? For more, yes. Yeah. For more information, give me a call. <coughs> it's advertising. You're absolutely right. Okay. But, you, but you don't put in there, I need $50,000 and I'll give you 2% of my company. Call me to do the deal. Right. You, you don't do that. That's, that's very specific. specific. If they can say yes, mm -hmm. that's an offer. So you don't put into your public your stuff uh, a yes no question stuff. Mm -hmm. They've got to get more information to get the, to do the deal. <coughs> so so you stay away. From, and an offer under the securities laws is not the same as an offer in the other worlds we inhabit. Okay, it's a very simple idea what I just said. Now, I've never seen that written down, but that's yeah, okay. So I always say, tell them you you need between 50 and 100,000. Tell them you're looking for, you know, to give away three to 8%, and you really don't know yet what you're doing, but at least you're giving them the ballpark. <laughs> but don't, let, so they can't say yes to, what, to that. They can say, yes, I want more information, but they can't do it uh, can't be an offer acceptance. Remember, I said you make yeah, an offer. So it's they make a counter offer. You've got to get that counter right. offer coming back. Mm -hmm. You're not specific. Yes, you're yes. ranged. Yeah, right. You're right. Ended, but yeah. you think of it as an advertisement. You're okay. Because okay. I was looking on Craigslist the other day under wanted, and it had this advertisement for an investor for um, a house mm -hmm. in Kentucky. By the whole house, or just a piece of it? Well, it was um, going in on. Um, Remodeling it, you know, probably for a fix and flip or, or for rental. Okay, rental. Probably a, probably a, I, I'm not saying what's, what people are doing out there is right. Okay. All I know is what I know. Okay. Uh, I would not go and crazy. I, did they say how much money they needed and what percent you got? Yeah, I think they did. Well, that's not what I would have done. Somebody's, somebody digs them somewhere. You know that the leads the state regulators get are all things like Craigslist. They're all over the internet now looking for people. Yeah, they're, they they're sites that are but frequently violating the rules. <laughs> Just because they set up the site yeah. doesn't mean they're responsible for the content. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And so, and I mean, can we do that? I no, to, no, 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 no. You really shouldn't it's do sad. that. Well, I, I'm giving, saying, generally I mean, speaking, I'm giving you the same. For an, and I, you I know. quote this under authority of Craigslist. <laughs> which is derived from the National Choir. <laughs> yeah, <don't, laughs> I, I'm not being very helpful. But let's turn the page here so we can talk about some other things a little bit. This is more my handouts, the last two, and these are old handouts. <coughs> and these aren't, doesn't have anything to do with the law, but this has to do with sources of capital. Yeah. And my, these are all my, per, these are personal ideas, okay? So if you're a seed, and that's where you guys are, I mean, you're you're pre-seed, you're, you're, you're not even a company yet, you're an invention. But, 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 but if you look, I made this up uh, 30 years ago, but still sort of true. Investors, see, investors typically want a return equal to five times what a public stock. So you have to look That's at the stock market. That early phase, yeah. Yeah, so, so that, let's say that the, they'd say the stock market went up, the, the, what is it, the, the, the Russell 2000, which is the smaller companies, would it go up? 36% or something last year. It was really it was big outrageous. time. Yeah. It won't be that. So that's a big, t you take five times that in terms of their expectations, that, that's, that's a lot of mu that's a lot of the company to give up. But I, I believe that to be, now, they, now, now what's happening is it's much less. Expectations are much lower now. I, I haven't been watching the market the last couple of weeks. But I made up people in your position need some frame of reference, okay? So I made up this five times. I, I mean, I don't know, but I, I've i always said that, and nobody said, no, John, you're full of it. That's not the way it works. Because you think of the investor, if he can get five, if he can get with a lot less risk, <coughs> a, a liquid investment, where he can just turn around and sell it right back, then, then why should he put his money into yours because you, you, doesn't, you don't know when you, he's going to get the money back. That's, that's the liquidity part. Plus, there's the risk of it all going to hell and not happening. Right. So that's why that five times, because that's the expectation. So this is just a list of sources of capital I came up with in 1984 when I did the overhead for this. <laughs> but they're still pretty good. I mean, if you've inherited the money, or you saw your savings account, or your family or friends can come up with it, uh, there used to be, sometimes there are and sometimes there aren't venture capital to invest in ideas, usually not, but private equity, that's for really big things. I mean, that's you know, private debt, bank, SBA, that one, you know, you can set up the entity and then you got a personal guarantee it. But public offering, that is really gone now. That I, I would definitely not advise the reverse merger kind of approach with just an idea. But, but it's possible. And then I made up some other things back in the day. I mean, if you have somebody, I mean, you set up your LLC, somebody really bites, then you can you can get the money. I mean, these are just ideas. Then the, I'm sorry. If it doesn't go anywhere, can you use it as a tax write-off? Yeah, sure. the IRS? Absolutely. If you structure it right, and the investor needs to know, I mean, what you're trying to get is ordinary losses and not capital losses, because that's a better deal, you know. Yeah. Well, you, you, you want a short-term capital loss no matter what. So what income, let's say the business entity has no or very little income, then where do I offset the losses? No, I'm the investor. We're talking about me being the yeah, investor. Yeah, you the investor. I've got income somewhere else I need to show. So you can pull that and offset it against income outside of the entity. I'm not a tax guy. Oh, well. But the, I mean, way, the way it sets up, there's, a, there's something called small business stock that's been around for a long time. If your company qualify, if you have a corporation and it qualifies and they invest and get 20% of it and then it doesn't go anywhere, okay. Now, if that's if it's equity, then you can, <coughs> I, 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 a lot of this stuff is online. But, 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 you know, if I loan you, that's equity, if I loan you $50,000, I have a bad debt, I can, it's a deduction, okay, that kind of thing. I mean, it's not like, I mean, we try to encourage people to take some risk in America. We try to encourage people with money to take some risk. And we work the tax laws from a personal tax point of view to be able to do that. So that's not a bad way to think about it. I'm <coughs> trying to think of reasons why someone... Invest in me. I could be a tax tax. <laughs> yeah, I, well, people do that. Yeah. <laughs> because that way they don't lose as much. At least they get the tax. Well, at least they get the deduction. And, and, you know, and, and there are special programs all around. I mean. Um, 
Colorado has programs, but you need income to offset with the law. <coughs> if you, if you, uh, incredibly rich people, you know, that it's everything is in dividends and capital gains. But if, so if they can get an ordinary loss uh, against a, against all these capital gains, that's not a bad way. If I say they've got hundred million or something, and it, nothing wrong with some losses in there. So you have to pick the right person to get the money from. A lot of this is the right person. Now, startup capital, we can you know that's that's a company that I try to define it inside these parentheses. That's a ways down the road. The, the theory of these four different categories here was to show that as your company grows, uh, there are more sources and they're more likely. So, so these are. Um, um, and your returns go down. I mean, right, and also to show to that they're expected because you reduce risk, <coughs> risk for the investor. Right. The investor has less risk. It's more likely that it'll have more liquidity. For liquidity, for example. So you give up less. So the longer you can develop, but I mean, the, the message is, the longer you can run with this on your own, the less of the company you have to give up because you've reduced risk all the way along. Of course, from your point of view, the other side of that could be, I don't know how many more credit cards I can get. I don't know how many more loans on my house I can get. Uh, I mean, all the things that entrepreneurs do to get things going. So, and with that, I, I, I pretty much am I th um, Whatever you, I'll answer questions or talk. This is about yeah, is this I'll what you want. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. There's, there's always the issue. I mean, as you go through these phases, you know, you've got the old investors and the new investors, and there's this conflict about the old investors getting diluted, and they'll do certain protections like to bump up their shares, like when the sec the next round comes in so they don't lose so much ground because it's like I invested so much money and my percentage is you know cranking down with each round of financing. Sure but you know if they come in at when you you know they're gonna cut a deal up at the beginning to get that five times expectation written into the whatever's there one way or the other if they know yeah. what they're doing okay which and there's there are little clauses and you read about this if you google the kind of stuff you'll see anti-dilution, anti-dilutive right. provisions. Um, depends what kind of investors you have. If it's your family, if your mom and dad, they're not gonna, they're gonna buy equity just the same as you are. And their motivations are different than capital return and stuff. You know? right. Depends on people's motivations, okay. Um, individuals are the same as big corporations. If it's, if it's something they really want to encourage because they might want to use it later on for something, they might give you a different kind of deal if something they could give a damn about it. It's really a financial investment for them. But but there are things like any dilution protection, um, which basically says, uh, I will get more shares if somebody else comes in with a with a better deal than I have on the downside. Okay, and then if you have to sell so much more on the upside, I have a right to play in that. Let's say I buy at a dollar. So if I buy at a dollar and I have anti-dilution protection, if the next people who come in, they get it for 50 cents, then they're, then you can have two kinds of clauses. One says what we call a full ratchet, which means, whoops, I get twice as many shares because now uh, I... I uh, Is that kind of like a perfect parity thing? Like I'm thinking, I'm an investor, I come in, I got 20% of your company, okay, the next round comes in, I go to 10, but the value of the company doubles. I'm, talk, I'm talking two different ways here. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about price per share. That's okay. all I'm talking about here. And the kind of things that create, that's one of the kinds of situations. So, so my goal, the question is what is my goal here? My goal is that my the value of my shares always increase. The value of my per share investment. So what you're saying is, look, if I have a company that's worth uh, ten million, uh, ten thousand dollars, okay, and I put in five thousand, I have fifty percent, I have okay. a third of the company because it's worth fifteen, okay, because uh, uh, they put in the five thousand cash to go with the ten thousand value of the company, I have a third of it, okay. So let's say all the share, it's one share per value, so, 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 so it's, it's fifteen thousand 
shares outstanding. And I basically bought a dollar a share of stock, if you look at it that way. Now the company needs another $5,000, okay? So if they sell the dollar, that's not a dilutive of the price, because right. it's another 5,000, we go to 20, <coughs> and we give out 5,000 more shares, let's say. So I got my, uh, 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 the guys who put in the first five, each of theirs is worth a dollar a share. The guys who put in the second five, each is worth a dollar a share. No argument. Right. Right. Okay. The company's increased in value. Company's increased in value, uh, uh, but, I, but, but, but my per share, I have, I only have a third anymore, I've got a quarter, right. but I haven't lost anything in my per share value. Let's say that for that $5,000, they wanted their stock at 50 cents, the new people. All of a sudden, my stock isn't worth a dollar a share anymore. It's a company that's got 25,000 um, shares outstanding, but, 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 but it's, it's only worth 20,000 because they got their 10,000. Yeah, your ags get value. So, so, so all of a sudden, my value of, has gone down. You can write pr provisions that the first <coughs> people with the first five, they can write things in to protect them from that drop. Okay, like they get more stock, okay? Or they get a right to buy more stock at a price, not at a dollar, but whatever is less, you know, something like that. So, so there are things you can do that are called anti-dilution, okay? Now, that's if you care about per share of stock. Now, if the company was worth 15 after you put your 5,000 in, and then all of a sudden it's worth 40,000 because of everything that was created inside the company, and then they need another five thousand dollars. Well, by golly, we know. Uh, let's say it's worth forty thousand, but it was worth. Uh, let's see, I'm confused here. I, 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 I've got fifteen thousand shares outstanding, worth forty thousand, pre-money. So all of a sudden, my stock went up, but almost three times, two point seven five, something like that. So my dollar became worth two dollars seventy-five cents. I'm really happy, guy, to to yeah, sell it. Yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, five thousand. Now you see about twenty percent. The next one, they invest five thousand, they get five percent. Yeah, and they right. Go up. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so the new money, they're happy because that's the fair market value. And there's always an argument about value, but fundamentally, if, if you <coughs> remember the, the theory of this is, money, effort reduces risk, makes the company worth more, so you sell less of the company later on, mm -hmm. and so you're per, you're. The value of your ownership interest as a passive person is growing. And that's what everybody wants, okay? Now, if you're the inventor, you're getting diluted on ownership percentage-wise, okay? That's the control problem you've been worried about. But the other yeah, side of that is, this shows it's, that it's, exactly. 50, yeah, it's 51 percent of a much bigger pie, right, you know? Right. After a while, <coughs> you begin to say, well, shoot, you know, I'll be happy with a third of it. Because the pie is getting so big, right? And, and but but I have to write into contract rules so that because so definitions of control change over time as success comes and things. Because I often talk to people and say, look, fifty percent plus one, a majority is really hard to hang on to. So let's put in the bylaws and the contracts that you got to have twenty five percent plus one to do any of these big things. And as long as we can keep you at twenty five percent plus one, we'll sell. 75% less one off to other people. And, and, and that's how we'll control the big deals. I mean, we'll have the president come in and he can run this thing. And so there's a ways to protect guys for a long time from getting sort of screwed up. But you, you, you gotta change your definition a, of control. Yeah, At a certain a period player. of time, I've had this conversation a lot. It's going so well and people will come in and they say, you know, I can't be president anymore. I just don't know what I'm doing. I want to be head of R&D. I let somebody else run this thing, and I'll I'll give them a lot because I realize the pain of running the show. Okay, so so they're willing to go in the lab and do their thing, okay, and and just, just ride it along. And but and there's always ways by contract to write in protection. Okay, but but, but nobody can guarantee anything in this world. I mean that's that's sort of. But the lawyer can't give you perfection. It just doesn't work. Steve Jobs got kicked out. And he said and he, then he had to come back. Right. Because <laughs> he knew Because he was smart. Yeah. <coughs> the, the markets change. 
people's motivations change. As you get older, you may or may not like certain things. So you just got to keep your options. Is all I'm saying is don't lock yourself into any particular way of thinking because these are great opportunities. Now, product development goes along the same kind of way. There's a seed phase for product development, if you, if you look in the books anyway. But don't look at any of this other stuff. But there's a seed and there's a startup. And they go like this, you know, the products in terms of markets and margins and things. So it's good to have, the MBAs are good for things like that. I don't, I don't know much about <laughs> that kind of stuff. But. I have just one more yeah, question. Sure. When you do a private placement memorandum, mm -hmm. how is that offered or solicited? Okay, so, so is that has to be to accredited, right? Is that what that? Uh, so remember the 4A2 statutory thing that says offerings not involving a public offering, and the court said no general solicitations. Okay, that's called a private offer. Okay. Remember the safe harbor 506B. Okay. Technically speaking, a private placement memorandum, like a washing machine machine that washes. A private placement memorandum is a memorandum that you use in a private placement. So it's 506B preemption or the 4A2. There is nothing else that should be called a private placement memorandum. This is the technical lawyer. People will slap this all over the place because private means not public, not general solicitation. Okay. So the crowdfunding on the internet seeking securities down the road, they shouldn't call those private placements because that's going to be a general solicitation. If Edward gets around, that's back at the end of next fall. That's in the memo. Okay. The 506C stuff, remember we just talked about that general solicitation? The SEC says that's not a private placement because it doesn't go back here. You call it a limited offering memorandum or a offering circular, or you could call it anything you want to. You shouldn't be calling it a private placement memorandum. So just in the technical words you used, a private placement memorandum is, is a PPM, and there are models for this, on, and then there are screwed up models, they're screwed up forms, they'll talk about this for other kinds of exemptions, but technically speaking, it's just for 506. <coughs> Typically, those are written because under a 506B offering, if you sell, you can sell up to 35 unaccredited people, people who aren't millionaires, people who aren't making 200,000 a year for each last year, 300,000 there. But there's a checklist of things you've got to follow. The SEC says you've got to do this if they're not accredited. Boom, 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 boom. And that is the stuff that you've got to be sure is in your private placement memorandum. And th otherwise, you, you lose the rule, the exemption, the preemption, and um, you're misleading them, the investors. Okay, if you have only accredited investors, it could be called a PPM. Lawyers tend to think about this checklist, but you know the the sale a PPM requires an audited balance sheet for the offeror if it's being sold, if the security is being sold in the 506B to unaccredited people. Okay, so so so. I mean, that's a rule. You've got to do it. You've got to get an account. You've got to pay the account. You, you can't just do unaccredited. It has to be a hybrid mix of accredited and unaccredited. No, on the you can sell only to unaccredited. Really? You want to. Sure, but they've only got 35. And there's yeah. so many millionaires out there anyway. I mean, my theory right. on this is of course. all the lawyers, <laughs> well, they're there. They may not like you, but there's so many. Yeah. Inflation. <laughs> this, they haven't changed these rules since 1986. <coughs> so oh, wow. think of the inflation right. that's gone on. Okay, And, and <coughs> we're sort of in this period now where every four years after the Jobs Act, after uh, Dodd-Frank, so that was 2010s and 2014, um, and later on this year, the SEC is going to come up with a report, and they might change the definition of accredited investor. They might raise it to a million five for their house. They might raise their income to 500,000. Uh, uh, so now's a better time to go this 506B only accredited investor route than it might be in a year or two because you're going to lose some of these people. Now, I am giving you way too much information because you, only because you're answering the, asking me the questions. But I've got guts. You don't have to use 506. Screw with 506. 
just use the statute. I mean, if it's just you and me, right? It's pretty private. <laughs> I mean, tell with everybody else. The statute takes care of us for uh, four A two. We don't have to file anything with anybody. There's a form D that goes with the five hundred six. We have a file. We save on lawyers. We save a lot on lawyers, and and we know it's private. You know, there's still a securities fraud risk, risk but I'll do it. I mean, it's a deal. And, but as long as you just tell me what the hell's going on, so you can call it a PPM that tells me what's going on. The PPM is the all-in-one-place info that you want the other people to, to have. Okay. Now, from my point of view, a PPM can be your business plan wrapped up with the subscription agreement form we want to use, and a little questionnaire that says, "Tell me you're an accredited investor." Okay. So you give them the whole thing. And then they give it back to you, fill out the form, uh, said, yeah, I'm a credit because I have a million dollars plus in my stock brokerage account or something, and it doesn't cut my house, and or my wife makes and I make this money. It goes back to you, you look at this, you look at the check, <laughs> you say, well, I think they're accredited, I think they're in the game. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it works for guys. But, but um, and that's a, that could be a shoebox. You can give them a shoebox worth of paper, boom, here's a whole bunch of it. We'll call it a private placement <coughs> memo, but you got to get the questionnaire so they give it back. This is really basic. I mean, I'll do it like that. Most, because uh, you just need to follow the rules. It, it all depends. All your risk depends on who are these people? Are they buttheads? You know, are they going to come and blame you? These, these, well, these investors? I, that, that, I mean, that's a question. Now, you. With a 504 offering, you'll see this in the article. A 504 offering is up to up to a million in a 12-month period. It has nothing to do with 482, 506B, or 506C. 504s are not preempted. The states are involved in this game. Okay. So if it's a 504, the feds don't care, but the state of Colorado will be watching very carefully. Okay. Once again, it's a federal exemption. The state has its own exemptions. So we will look to some other state exemptions. You can have a, a 504 offering that is generally solicited federal level, but the states require you to register that just as if it were a federal registration. So you're going to have, a, the reason you want to register things is because they're criminal liability for a false filing with the SEC. And you have to file all your stuff. It's the same deal with the states. If you have to file this 504 stuff with the state, you're going to make mistakes. I mean, nobody's perfect. And one mistake is a false file. So you don't want to go through this registration process at the state level either, okay? So we all like this 506B, we all like the 482, because 482 especially. There are other exemptions, uh, 147, excuse me, this is all in the memo, intrastate offering. You and I live in Golden, what the hell, we live in Golden. So there's rule 147 protects us, now that's a safe harbor under three, section uh, 3A11 of the, and that's a safe harbor, that's a safe harbor. Once again, if you screw it up, we just go back to the state stuff. The safe harbor says, it's not on any of this, says 80% of the assets of your company have to be in Colorado. 80% of the proceeds of my investment have to stay in the state. There are a few little, little things, but it's too easy. You make one offer in Wyoming, you're screwed. You lose the exemption. So it's, the, it's a really close personal, you don't use the internet for this one. You don't use. Uh, Are those that I'm common? Well, I mean, how often is that used? Well, I just told you, we, you probably use it all the time. Oh, really? You and I. I well, once again, we're back no. on the fraud problem, but that's, yeah. yeah. People don't talk about that because lawyers <coughs> don't talk about it. <coughs> Two reasons. A, it's too easy to screw it up. I just told you one offer in Wyoming, and the yeah. internet, whatever you put in the internet, you don't know where it goes. And it never goes away. Yeah, it never goes away. Uh, but two, <laughs> there's not a lot of legal fees in a 147. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> there's no preemption, but 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 uh, there are state exemptions uh, for for what you and I do. Just between us, there's there's small offering exemptions and stuff like that. I mean, but 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 prior existing business relationship, 
they really won't regulate that very hard on the exemption side. They will on the fraud side. If you're out there, you join the country club and, and you go bad, well, you, you, whatever that movie is about the drugs, uh, what's that, going bad or something? Breaking bad. Breaking bad. All of a sudden, everybody in the country club is getting ripped off by you. They don't know it. You hit them all in a month and you're gone. <laughs> you just ripped for the a wrong way. They don't like that. The regulators will come after you if you're over to Rolling Hills and just take all, and all of a sudden you rip everybody off and run to mouths. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, I would, I would say if you can't find me, I went north. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the investors will come after you too. So. No, that, that would all. Oh no, I, I represented a guy a long time ago, and he went bad. He's in jail in Arizona. After his third bankruptcy, the investors got really upset. <laughs> He's so a how do you find all so these, to the Eskimos. How do you find all these millionaires you're talking about? Well, there's a book called a Millionaire Next Door. That right. came out. I read, yeah. read that. No, the question was, you well, said it's easy to find millionaires. They're everywhere. Investors. I mean, yeah. you know, I didn't say to invest. I just said it's easy to find millionaires. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't say they're easy to find them to invest. Uh, ones well. that want to give up money. <laughs> and then you well, talked about seed stage. I didn't see angel capital in there. Is that coming into seed stage, or is well, that, that that's um, is that under venture capital or what? That's that's. Nah, I didn't really put that. That's. It's hard to get angels in a seed stage stuff. Okay. For a corp for a corporation, if I mean if you're just trying to syndicate your idea, and not form a business. This is about forming a business, this one is. Right, but but if you just want to find someone to license your technology to, okay, well, if that's what you're after, that's a different way of thinking. And that goes back to the intellectual property. And you can do a license. I mean, if you own it, like you invented to get a patent, you can license it off to somebody who's going to develop it. And people will invest in the royalty returns. I mean, they will just want a piece of, you, of the license. Uh, and I don't know, but I never really had to think about that as a security in and of itself. It's a way to get money. You're giving up a piece of the future, right? But just for small dollars, not a lot. The uh, the um, you know angels are all over the place. I mean, the I, this was back before the angel clubs all showed up. But the but the I guess if you want to put angels in here, they're always there. Like it's probably private equity. Um, slash angels if you want. I mean, that doesn't, these aren't private equity funds. These are just <coughs> people who people. invest. I mean, there are people around. It's there. really a private equity is just a fund of angels, right? It could be. Well, I mean, much, yeah. yeah. And, and you said don't go on Craigslist. Um, you know, I think it's a legitimate site. I mean, I rent through Craigslist. I've been lucky. I I screen people. I'm not arguing about Craigslist. I'm not no, but I'm saying why can't you, on under wanted? Why can't you say, you know, uh, do you want a percent of my idea? Apparently, you can if you don't say specific terms. You can say that. You can right. say that. Don't say what percent. I, I mean, I, 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 there are lines. There are places they also don't go. I mean, when Phil Fagan was securities commissioner. He said, John, I never go to the Rockies Adventure Club meetings because I know they're violating the laws, but if I go down there, I'll have to shut them down. So I never go down there because I know they're doing the right thing. <laughs> I mean, they're not scam scammers. I, yeah, I guess it's like, yeah. what's the goal of the law and to prevent fraud? Yeah, I mean, he, he, was a, he was a decent regulator. And Fred Joseph, who retired, he's a good, he, he used to be the uh, Securities Commissioner. They went acting with him. He's a, no, I, I used to see ads in the paper, in the want ads, you know, want invest, investors for my idea. Is uh, that, that legal? Is, that's sending a message. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think it's wrong. That's sending a message that you might sell your idea. And right. that's not a security if you sell yeah. the whole thing. I mean, there's, there's ways to look at that's too general for me to get really upset about that. If someone is going to I don't think they're friend, very successful. No, I don't either, but it's a waste you know, of time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now there's something you do see in the Denver Business Journal a lot lately, which is guys they want to build our condominium, and they keep putting this ad in all the time. And people say, "Well, John, is that a general solicitation?" I I say, what that is is testing the waters stuff under something called Regulation A. It's in the memo. Don't bother with it. But there are ways to get things out there. That 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 only the lawyer understands how they're getting it out there. You may think it's a general solicitation under 504, 
but the lawyers found another way. I mean, I uh, when they were doing the crowd uh, funding, uh, there were all these little companies that set up after the Jobs Act was passed, uh, all around. You know, three or four in Colorado. We're going to help you do this. We're going to run crowdfunding sites and sell securities for you on the web and all that kind of stuff, the internet. Okay, and. So I had one of these guys, he said, well, how do these guys do it? So he takes me to this site in Ohio. So he walked me through the site, and I, I'm a credit investor, so I, after a while I didn't want to put any more information into it. But it turned out, I got to a place where I realized, as a securities lawyer, while he, my client thought that was what he wanted to be, all they were doing was a, connecting with themselves, and getting, building a list of accredited people. They were never putting us, they were talking, they went over with World of Beer was one of the companies, okay. They were not giving our name to World of Beer. Uh, they were just getting ready, building up a list so when the rules came out, they could give our names to World of Beer. I like beer because I used to be on the Great American Beer Festival board. But the, the so I said, well, I'm not. So they have never closed a deal on that website. That's and there are no crowdfunding selling stock sites like that. But, but, but he thought they were, and, so, and, and he's not accredited, so I had to go down into that to figure out how to do that. There's something called AngelList, okay. so, and there's also something called Gust. Okay. AngelList is a in registered investment advisor under a different part of the law. They're not a broker dealer, they're an investment advisor. So they were building up lists of people. Once again, I, looked, I went into that, and I started going to say, ah, it's too intrusive. I don't want to tell anybody how I live. And, but, and I'm, so I didn't fill that out either. But when the rigs came out on September 23rd for general advertising, general solicitation under 506C, okay, 1,500 companies that were on angel list behind that you used to have to have a password to get to see if you wanted to invest, because there's ways to, you look at investing in something under 506Bs on the internet. It's not like you can't use it. Uh, but you had to get a password and identify yourself and go behind the firewall. And then all of a sudden they all came out and, and, and they said, we're looking for money. But that wasn't the crowdfunding stuff. It was that they had two, they had letters from the SEC, no action letters, saying that the website as an investment advisor could could get involved in this. So the companies were basically um, forming pools of investors who became the investors were were, were, were being advised by Angel List to the, these were good investments as opposed to Angel List representing these companies themselves. It was this you've got to get down to the technical stuff. You know, that is basically it. So um, I can't say, I don't want to sit here and say that Craigslist and a bunch of scumbags, they're awesome. I mean, they're good. We buy things on Craigslist or Amazon or any of that, but they don't want to get liability either. Sometimes they become broker dealers, which you can do. Remember under the... Craigslist look, becomes a broker dealer? Uh, they could. I mean, I, I don't know if they are. They could have a subsidiary. So, so what I'm telling you is what, as an, uh, from a company side, when, from an individual side, when you go out, I'm a securities lawyer, that's what I talk about. But, you know. yeah. Well, like I said, I have a lot of ideas, as Roger knows, but I don't want to be actively involved. And, you know, I'm, on, uh, I'm at a stage of my life where I just want my ideas to try to make money for me. Sure. So, that's what I'd want, too, but, you know, is I think that, is that that's an hourly rate kind of deal. Actually, <laughs> you know. Would, would a bottom line, John, be, um, okay, Donna's starting a company. You need an investor, okay? So one safe way to do it is have the investor work in your business. That's the the ma manager member, right? And that's what you want anyway. That's, that's somebody that's else. Pretty that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or You're minimizing risk. Is what we're or if she does the pure armchair investor who doesn't work in her business, it needs to be an angel. I mean, yeah, I'm credited. I mean, the more <laughs> okay. credited and. So yeah. Sophisticated and have the ability to bear the risk of loss. You know? yeah. And uh, how do you find those people was part of this. And yeah, you're, you're saying, how do I find those people? Well, 
you talk to somebody who wasn't interested. Is that right? The well, early brothers or something? Yeah, the Righteous Brothers. Righteous brothers. Uh, it was his manager. But, you know, that's the thing. These people that have money have a lot of connections, especially like in the music world. You know, that's what I figure that they have enough connections that they could maybe put the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. But they haven't taken my idea and run with it out there. It's not out there. They don't like your idea. <laughs> Sounds like they didn't like it. They didn't want to put any money. Well, on see, it. no, I didn't <laughs> tell them my idea because okay. we had the no evaluation right. agreement, and they wouldn't even sign the agreement. They usually won't sign. That's the sad part. Well, why? People just say go away. Well, because they see so many deals. Nobody wants to hassle with them, and they it's get so they get bombarded with them, and they don't want to evaluate each one. So, so is the solution you, you don't sign? Huh? Is the solution you don't make them sign? Yeah, that's Pat what I'm Penny. saying. Are you going oh, to protect that's your idea? With a patent, right. With a patent. Yeah. Right. With a patent. With a copy yeah. Right. Or a copyright. Saying saying that I need a idea, copy. yeah. Well, you've got common law <coughs> and copyright. Uh, I like it. The more you've done on your own, like getting it registered, the more you've registered, the more. I mean, I did a deal one time with two guys. Excuse me. We represented a company. We had filed for, unbeknownst to a couple of the programmers, we had filed with the Library of Congress for copyright. Okay. They left, Jared Polis, I Sherpa, invested in their new company. Okay. We got our copyright. We didn't want to do that anyway. They were using our stuff. You could find it right there in the code. And they had to write a big check. If the right people steal your stuff, they're dumb enough and they steal your stuff, you can get money if you've got the copyright or the patent. I mean, I agree, trade secrets are hard. Trade secrets almost impossible. Right, because they're, <coughs> ideas. they're not easily ascertainable. It's just an idea. I mean, it's really hard. But Well, you know. Walt Disney just had an idea. So it's a trouble, <laughs> Donna. Your ideas are all trade secrets. Yeah. And they're very fragile and they're very weak and they're subject to theft. And I mean, if someone can steal one from you, it's hard to prove that. He said, she said, and those are yeah. tough places to mm -hmm. be. They got the money and you don't. Mm -hmm. okay. But there are people who succeeded. I and mean, it wasn't the windshield wiper in, Grant, in General Motors. That guy fought for 40 years. 40 yeah, years. There's, it's a movie. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Oh, it was the old. Uh, judge thing in a patent court, Flash of Genius. It's a movie. You can get the DVD on Amazon. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't real popular, but it's a great movie. But this guy, uh, he just he went about it all wrong. I mean, he he kept fighting it himself in court. I mean, mm -hmm. for like forty years, <laughs> and he did get money, but. Um, well, sometimes it's the principle of the thing. I mean, there's well, lots yeah, of ways. He wanted, like he he had uh, he actually had Ford held down. They were this is way back in oh, the sixties. Ford, Ford. Okay. They were going to give him like thirty five million, and he goes, "No, I want Ford to print on the Detroit Free Press in big letters on the front page that they stole my they idea." Stole it. <laughs> and they go, "No, no, we won't do that. We'll give you thirty five million. And he goes, "No, I don't want." That. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like yeah. he he gets these bizarre notions, and he's kind of his own worst enemy. Well, all I'm saying is that, that the, the system is in place, but there's no, it's very hard to beat money makes the rules kind of issues. Okay. The golden well, rule of those saying, ethical rules. You're saying uh, it's better for me to do a copyright of my idea first? And then you can't really the copyright an idea. So I don't know your idea. You're, you're you like to copyright a tangible expression of an idea. Mm. So copyright has to be something. Well, I do have that, don't I? Like you can copyright a song, but not the idea of <coughs> the song. Yeah, or a book. Not the idea of the book, but the, the this fixed story. The actual book. Like, okay, the idea is a book about the Civil War. Right. So uh, there's a particular story that's a certain angle that's copyrightable. Okay. But someone else can write a Civil War book from another angle, and it's a perfectly separate copyright. Okay. I mean, of an odd, odd position, like on a new biological finding, you copyright that. Can you protect that? You mean a science paper? Is it a, like a sequence or something? 
it's just something that wasn't known. It was already known? But, but, wasn't known. but maybe the idea that... Um, Did God make it? Boric mm -hmm. acid? Maybe. That's the it, question. It has Mark. to be uh, not a product of nature. It has yeah. to be a product of humankind. Okay, but that so discovering the way nature works, that you can't copyright that? No, the chakra body case, well, case, if, if it's already in there, like a gene sequence or something, and then you're just finding out what the sequence, you can't patent the sequence. Is that, I understand that, right? But if you change the sequence, you can start to think about, I mean, and God didn't make it like that. It's just different. Can you, can you patent or copyright the, the basic disclosure of the, of the idea, you know, this? Well, copyright's really for Patent and copyright, the only time they really cross is in software. Otherwise, yeah. they're, they, they're for different protection schemes for different kinds copyright of Copyright is more um, entertainment and fiction. Mm -hmm. And patent's going to be more functional. And so the different offices, I mean, the Patent Trademark Office does patent, the Library of Congress does copyright. So when you the strategy is forks on the road with software is all I'm saying. And they're, they, they're, you know, when you register them, it's completely different. Yeah, but, the, but all I'm trying to say is patents are expensive. I mean, there's different paths to giving some protection to something. In bio, I used to be in the board of the Bioscience Association, and I've been in uh, representing some biotech companies. And it, that's been a tough area for the Supreme Court. They've moved around in that area. Like, that's why I sort of back into, if you find it in nature, you probably can't patent it. But people will still, they'll file one just to have it. <laughs> even if it's weak or it gets thrown out, you know, you got Sure, to, patent got pending is a, is a pretty good yeah. protection sometimes for a startup, even if you ever get it. You give you two and a half, three years, however long it takes. And you can usually find variations on it. I'm not sitting and say you file a false application. I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> there are strategies that people do. I'm not a patent lawyer, but there are lots of strategies in here. Um, it, 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 we have a good system in our country, but now it's totally it's changed. It's first to file. Yeah. It's gonna. That's that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So is this what you wanted out of me? I mean, I'm a, yeah. I, I like talking to you, it's great. Okay, all right. all <laughs> it's an Irish face, so talking uh, is part of the deal. So where do we get this memo? Or this on, my, on Fairfield and Woods' website, I have some cards. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, fwlaw.com, right? Right. Uh, we, we moved our offices, so it's different. All the contact info is good except for the address, but here's some cards. Tell all your friends were great. Is there a is there a section on the site that says articles or? Now the way you want to do it is you can you can you, you would go to if I were doing this, go to the securities, uh, go to articles, and look at securities, and you'll find that this thing this one, or if you go to the securities website, you'll see this article running down. There are a bunch of articles that are on the right hand side. Or if you go to the John Eckstein biography page, uh, you might find it that way too. Uh, it looks like if you put that long title on Google, you'll find it. Yeah, if you put in information for the small business person interested in such What was it again? Uh, information for the small business person interested in selling securities, friends after the Jobs Act. Just just put in the highlight. Uh, put in the big one, big words. And Do you have any more cards? Oh yeah, um, I have a few more. Info for the small business person interested in selling securities. Here, pass the press more down. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty close. To that. It's pretty close to that. If not, there's another article in there that was written for lawyers only. That you might want to look at. It says private placements after the Jobs Act. Uh, I don't try to read that. There's a bunch of stuff in there that, I, and also I did a, I did a webinar uh, on YouTube. It's not the most exciting. You're a YouTube star. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 for, for a group called Meritas, M-A-R-I-T-A-S, 
That's only about the it's a law group. It's only about the Jobs Act, and it's only about 506B. I'm comparing it to B and C, um, it's okay, but I, I it, it won't. It, it was for securities lawyers who are all around the country. There's about a hundred of them working there. I mean, I this is something I really like, so I go way in the weeds on this stuff. So. <laughs> Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. 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 Thanks.